Okay, today we're going to do a full overview of how to make a quick event registration form, hopefully in less than 10 minutes. Um, there's a lot of different platforms out there like Eventbrite, which might be a bit large and expensive and complex for your need, but you're having an event, you need to charge for tickets, uh, you might have various packages, you need to keep track, stay organized, um, issue uh, an order number or a ticket number to your customers so that when they show up you can check your spreadsheet and make sure that they've paid. All of that can be accomplished using Google Forms and the Payable Forms add-on, which we're going to demo here today. should be pretty quick and easy. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to make a net new Google Form. You've never made a Google Form, go to forms.google.com. Super easy tool to create registration forms of any type. So. I'm going to make one for my virtual hackathon for good, and this is really just a demo form uh, for the payable forms add-on. Okay, so first question um, you can change here uh, is the different types. So for short answer, I'm going to ask my uh, for their their uh, team name, and this is what they're going to be called uh, during the hackathon. And maybe the second paragraph, what might be a team bio. So during the event, we can you know make shout outs to the different members of the team and how it works. Um, then we're going to have the team package. Uh, what are they paying for? We're going to do multiple choice on this one. And so basic two person entry um, is going to be $199. And the second one is going to be advanced team of four, and that's going to be $189. Well, let's make this $289. And the super advanced package is going to be uh, $300. Okay. Well, let's make it $350. Okay, perfect. The other thing you can do with um, these event questions is do checkbox for optional questions. And so we can make each of these required, you know, if it's a required part of entry, you want somebody to answer this question. They have to pick a package so you can make it required. Um, for checkbox questions, these are great for like add-ons and things like that that somebody might want to uh, add on to the event, but optionally. And they might want to pick many. So you can do like a uh, pack, let's do a 12 pack of Red Bull and that's going to be $24, and maybe um, some uh, sponsorship signage, uh, 12 by 12 is going to be 50 bucks if you want to have a sign of sponsors. Cool. The other um, dropdown you could do is something like a dropdown, sorry, as, as well. And so say you wanted guest passes in various quantity. So say you had some guests and they needed to register who were not team members. What you can do here is, um, so we can do guest uh, pass uh, and then you go quantity one and this is going to be $10. And what we can do is put multiple, whoop, quantity two, and that's gonna be $20. Quantity three, that's going to be $30. Quantity four, $40. And as you see fit, um, say, Let's go all the way down to five for uh, perfect. Okay, and that looks good to me. And generally, this looks like a good hackathon registration form. So these are optional because you don't need a guest pass. Um, these are optional because you don't need to select an add-on, but you do need a team package. Let's make the team name be required. Okay. Up here is the customize theme button. And this is kind of cool because it lets you, you know, change the style and then the color. So since this is a hackathon, let's try to make it look a bit, um, you know, technology-ish. Uh, what does that look like? Um, well, this looks kind of hackathony. Let's uh, just insert it. And what this will do 
is uh, kind of change the styles and the background and the color. Okay, so you got a nice form. Now the key is if you want this to automatically calculate and be payable, you need to add the payable forms add-on. And so to do that, uh, if you go to the Google Workspace Marketplace and just search for payable, you will find the payable forms add-on. I already have it installed, but you would click on it and you would install the Google um, payable forms add-on for Google Forms, okay? And so it allows you for a couple permissions and then once you got that done, you can use, you'll see this puzzle piece here and this puzzle piece helps you uh, keep track of any add-ons that you have installed. Let's uh, make sure the hackathon is there, okay. So when I click on this and I have installed it already, so you'll see payable forms is here. And what I need to do is click on the button here, make this form payable, nice and easy. So what this is going to do is pop open the payable forms sidebar here. And uh, what we need to do is kind of go through these steps in order to make it payable. So we're going to auto configure the form and sheet And this takes a second or two, but what it does is it automatically adds an email address input. Um, it's required to send the user a text message, or sorry, a, a email and a receipt if uh, when they complete the form. We change it changes the confirm message with a checkout link, and they set the destination. So each time somebody fills this out, it will go to a Google Sheet. And if you click this button, it'll open up that Google Sheet. So you can see here, um, each, this is one of the features. You can look at responses, of course, um, inside the Google form, but what ends up happening is, so if you hover this, it'll say view responses in sheet. So sometimes you have to refresh the page because uh, after the plugin adds it, Google doesn't automatically do it, but that's how you get back to the sheet if you're ever wondering where the sheet is. And this is the sheet. So each time somebody fills out my form, I'm gonna get this information. And then what the payable forms add-on does is they automatically create an order ID, calculate the total, keep track of the status, and um, all of the other pieces over here. Purple columns are the uh, columns that come across from the Google form. And then these are the payable uh, columns that the payable add-on keeps track of. Okay, so let's go back here and reopen our um, our form since we closed it by accident there. Okay, so we don't need to add a sample payment section because we already added um, payments right into our pieces. I'm gonna change this because it looks like we uh, put equals instead of a dash there. And um, so we already have all of those pieces done. What I'm gonna do is sync the theme with the checkout. So what this does is it takes any of our like colors and our various pieces, and it'll even show you a preview of what your checkout experience might look like now. Um, so there it is, it looks you know identical to our Google form, has the colors and the header and the styles, and um, you can see the credit card or PayPal and the various alternative payment uh, options as well would appear like this. So. This looks good to me. That looks like a nice hackathon checkout page. So I'm just gonna close that. Um, let me open the window again. Okay, and the next thing to do is connect a payment provider. So when you connect a payment provider, what that will do is open the payment provider window and um, you can connect PayPal, uh, I think they're working on Stripe, Square, etc. And so what I'm gonna do is just connect a normal PayPal account. It's available in many countries around the world and is a pretty quick and easy way to go about getting something set up. Um, I'm just gonna do this next. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. And so that should refresh um, the window automatically. Let's see what happens here. And so you can see here that PayPal is now connected. 
and um, it is now connected to this form. So what we can do is uh, close this window and finally toggle on, make this form payable. All right, and uh, what we can do now is uh, make a test transaction. So right now it's listening, it's gonna email the submitters and uh, our, our data will automatically be calculated and go into that attached uh, Google Sheet. So let's give it a try. So this is what our form would look like to anyone who's filling it out. Um, um, awesome hackers and uh, we are the best from MIT. And uh, it's gonna be a team of four. Yeah, we'll take the Red Bull. Red Bull. And do we need any guest passes? Yeah, let's take uh, three guest passes. Okay, I'm gonna hit submit. And you can see what happens here is this is the normal Google form confirmation method message. Um, and we added a link here automatically during the setup uh, to the Google form. If you look at the sheet right now, you can see that um, there is my submission and it's come across and an email has been sent, but it hasn't been paid yet. So let's click on the link as if we were the user. And what this is gonna do is bring us to the checkout um, for the most recent form submission that just came across. So you, you can see here, here's that order ID that's been assigned to my order automatically. Um, here is my package. That was an advanced team of four, the 12 pack of Red Bull and some guest passes. So that's uh, pretty cool. It's $343 uh, and we are in Canadian right now. And then I have my linked checkout options. And so depending on the type of PayPal account that you've connected, you may or may not have inline card. Uh, you, uh, we, they call this advanced card. You might have inline card payments. So we include some test cards here. If you want to give it a shot, um, you can do a checkout, 0925. And the expiry date on this one is 371 and hit pay. So you can see what happens is it will process the payment and redirect the user to the paid page. And if they ever come back to this order, uh, it will show them the receipt automatically. So they can't pay for it twice. Uh, once it's been paid for, it's marked as paid and, and won't let somebody pay it again. Nice. So now when I look at my spreadsheet, wow. So you can see here the, the status is updated to paid. Um, I can see how the person paid. They paid with a MasterCard. Uh, it was ending in 2187. And uh, I have my transaction ID from PayPal and when this was updated. So when the user placed the payment. So that is really quite cool. It keeps track of everything. If you wanted to take a look at um, the link, the URL, you can click on it here and that will show you the order. So you can take another look at the receipt. But generally you, the manager, are the only person who sees the spreadsheet. And as teams register, they will automatically pop in here and as they pay, the payment status will automatically update. Very, very handy and easy to use. When the users come to your event, um, they could show you their receipt if they printed the receipt from the receipt page. Um, and they can use the payable order ID to quickly look up the team. And you can see if they've paid and what they've paid for uh, quickly and easily, which is really quite cool. Um, one other thing I'm going to show you if we go here to the payable forms add-on again, configure payment settings, is uh, there are some additional checkout settings here. If you require a shipping address, you can collect it. And you can add taxes and a handling fee, kind of like an electronic surcharge or something like that. So. If we wanted to add 15% taxes, you can even key in here 15 if you want to jump to it. So let's uh, add a 15% tax. And, you know, let's do a 3% handling fee for, you know, help cover some of the electronic uh, payments from, you know, paying for PayPal, et cetera, like that. If you wanted to do that, you can add those here. Okay, so once that is updated, uh, we can do another test transaction. When you go to share your form, all you have to do is send it like you usually do. So this is to send it by email. Um, you click this button to get a link to your form. If you want a shorter link, you'll, that'll shorten it. And so all you really have to do is share with your users that, um, that form. So let's uh, share it one more. Let's do another transaction here. Do uh, team three, we'll call this one. And uh, there is 
only four of us, which is weird. Uh, and we're going to do four. We're going to take the red ball and one, uh, two guest passes. Okay. We are going to migrate across to the checkout. And you should be able to see the taxes of 15% were added. A convenience fee of, I think we did 3% or something like that was added. And the total amount due is all available here. Uh, this time we can, let's use the discover card, the test card. I'm going to paste that in there. And 10, 24, uh, 059. Pay with discover. All right, and so as you can see, I was now able to check out for everything. And when we go over here, we can see uh, this was a transaction that was abandoned. Uh, the user didn't end up paying for it. And then some transactions that went through uh, as we just did here. And the total was added and the, and the taxes and the fee. So that's it, that's a, a quick overview. When you're ready to go live, um, all you really have to do is go back to the payable forms add-on again, so configure payment settings, and you will just turn off the test mode. So test mode right now is on, so no real money is moving, and when you're ready to go live, you would switch this to off real money. But for now, I'm gonna leave it um, in the on mode, and I will share um, my, my form so you can try it out. If you would like to try it out and submit uh, a test transaction and, and look at how the payment gateway works and stuff, that's no problem. I will uh, include the link in the picture to this video. And uh, I hope this was helpful for you in uh, looking at how to make a simple event registration form. All right. Thank you and uh, goodbye.